How am I? What a great question. Um, and thank you for asking, by the way. <laughs> Um, I think I'm good, considering the current situation that we're in. Look, I always tell myself, when you think you're suffering, know that other people are suffering a lot more than, than you are. Um, I'm, I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm at home. I am with my parents, which has been fantastic because normally I don't get to spend time with my parents that much. And I've been here now for, for two months. Um... I live in in London, but I have a pending move back to the States. And and so I don't always get to spend more than two or three days in Belgium. So having been home for this long is has both been rewarding, but I'm also going to be very honest in saying that sometimes it has really just it gotten to me. Um, also, I'm in the countryside and I'm a city girl. <laughs> so I really miss having this, you know, bustling city around me and being able to just go out and have everything close by on the other hand being here in the countryside i get to really enjoy nature and be in nature and for me that's always been a very therapeutic um way of calming my senses so you know i try to meditate a lot i, I go for long walks um being close with the family of course gives me that special quality time with them which has been amazing and thanks to FaceTime, we get to speak to everyone around the world. Um, but, you know, to, to be honest, I have days where I wake up and not having a sense of direction or knowing what's going to happen in the foreseeable future is quite scary. And sometimes I get overwhelmed with anxiety. Um, so I have good and, and bad days, but I try to stay optimistic. And whenever I feel that I'm I'm struggling most and I... I you know, sometimes you can meditate and go for a walk, but then other days you just don't want to get out of bed and you don't feel like doing anything. And whenever I find myself in a situation like that, I will try to not make it about me, but the, about the people around me and the people that I know. So I tend to reach out to people and check in with them and ask them how they are um, instead of making it about me. That always helps me to just like take the equation away from myself and make it about other people so that's a, a good little trick to pull yourself out of a, a bad day I think just make it about other people I usually feel incredibly replenished after that can I describe the season finale in three words absolutely not I mean it's grand it's awesome <laughs> Um, and it's, it's everything. It's, you know, I, I remember shooting the finale. I don't think I've ever worked so hard as an actor and as a team as well. I mean, the girls, the whole team, as we got to the last episode, we, you know, we had been playing, we, we were really like feeling our characters. We were living them and we, we've come together as a team and a unit that was so strong um, which was truly uh, incredible. We had to do so much work in such little time. I mean, the finale is spectacular. I cannot wait for you guys to see it. We worked so hard. We worked incredible long days. Um, I remember I was I was very ill at that time, but you know the show must go on. You can't just call in and say, uh, "Oh, hey guys, uh, I'm not going to be able to make it today because I'm not feeling well." It's you know. It just doesn't happen. I had a doctor come to set and injected me with a B12 shot. And that was that. And you just had to go on. But, you know, the passion that we had for, for the pro project that we have for the project was just making us move mountains. And that's what we have did. We had a very limited time. But the, the entire crew, I mean, we're an army of people. And, and to to have done what we did, I mean hands down i i thank everybody who was involved in in the production because it was it was very challenging but but we did it and you know we were shooting on this mountain range in canada um and there was a full moon uh one of the nights uh i mean I, you know you 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 stand there and you're so lucky it was also very emotional because you're coming to the end of the show you've been working for 6 months all together and you know it's coming to an end and you have no idea yet how it's going to be perceived but i remember um during you know making the finale and then shooting the finale it was just so overwhelming and it, it didn't matter whether i was sick or not you just 
kept going and we gave it our all we gave it our everything so the finale it is it's it's badass and it's coming at you soon and i hope you enjoy it because we certainly did making it <laughs> if motherland would be our reality where would i see myself hmm. look when i read the script and i read alder um i i i said no to other offers and productions that had come to me which is is not a given and that was the very first time in my career and it was one of the hardest decisions i had to make but for me you know having shot the pilot and for motherland and portraying uh, alder for me it was pretty adamant that that's who i've got to be so i think if motherland would be our reality i'd be general alder i mean i am general alder right <laughs> When it comes to Alder's hobbies or activities that she would have, um, I I kind of, you know, thought that Alder, you know, she made a comment where she thinks that the one thing that the humans got right were making whiskey. She loves whiskey. And it wouldn't surprise me if Alder would have a little basement um, <laughs> on the base, a hidden little private basement where she has her own little brewery and maybe has been making whiskey for hundreds and hundreds of years and distilling them and tasting them and you know just a, a little challenge for herself to to even you know create a whiskey that is even better than the humans would make because i think she's very proud of the distinction that she's not human but also a witch um so that making her own whiskey and then another act activity i think she, i think she's a great lover of music and it would be classical music because i think if we go back Classical music has been around since, I mean, forever. I would actually have to look it up when the first classical piece, it's a good thing to look up, by the way, uh, was written or composed. But I, I, I do believe that she would be listening to a lot of classical music, maybe, you know, while taking a bath <laughs> um, after a long day at the office or after a day when a city drop has gone wrong or feels that everyone is against her. Um, that would probably soothe her listening to classical music. So that would definitely be one of her activities. And then playing board games with her biddies. Board games, board games, board games. I'm sure she's a fanatic uh, into playing board games. So <laughs> those are, I think, would be the hobbies and activities that, activities rather, that Alder would um, like. When I read the initial script um, of Motherland and I auditioned for General Alder, um, what drove me to read for it was the the world that was created by Elliot Lawrence. It was so unique. It was something that I had never really read before. Um, and I love to be challenged as an actor. So when I read the part of Alder, um, she scared me, if anything. Um, and not just by the character or the person, the personality that she has, but more of the level of difficulty to to portray her. First of all, I'm, I'm Belgian and uh, General Alder is American, has led and basically made America into what it is. And so, you know, to master an American accent is, is, is not easy, but um, I'm very proud that I'm finally at a place where I can where I can do that. Um, so that and, you know, to to portray and play a female general is not um, any given thing. I'm I myself am completely different than than General Alder, if not the opposite. For me, it was about the posture, the language, the way that I had to portray this knowledge um, that she has been carrying for over 300 years. Um, when something scares me, it's usually that's usually the sign when I know that I want to put my claws into it and, and really, you know, tackle the, the level of difficulty in that way. So when I read for it, I never really thought that I would hear back or be cast for this um, because it was, you know, such a far reach and so far fetched to to who I am. So when I when I heard that I was cast for the general, I to be very honest, I was I was really, really scared because I knew that I was going to face a level of difficulty that would come my way. 
which I have never experienced before. But um, again, I think it's it's one of the most uh, incredible roles that I've taken on, and I've I've actually feel privileged that I got to play a woman in such power, um, especially during the times that that we're in now, and to portray a world that is new and unique and that people had never seen before. The my favorite relationship in the show, I I believe, would be the one between Rael and Scylla, just because it's such a paradox. Um, uh, I myself usually always go for the, <laughs> the the person that I should not be going for. Um, but you know, it's 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 so vulnerable and how they play it. It's it's so beautifully portrayed because you know they're they're each other's enemy and yet they they find each other on a on a more human level and you know it's it's romeo and juliet it's 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 um tristan and isolde it's 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 all of that it's the classical um romance uh, you know um and i i recognize that and i think it's very intricate and very complex and you know, even you see that as well when Rael goes back, there is still when she says that to Anacostia, I, I still love her. And to be able to, you know, um, admit that, even though you're talking about your enemy and an enemy that has infiltrated your world and, and has killed many a people, but still that there is a love that somehow um stands is 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 quite interesting and and you know that's that's what storytelling all is is all about you know you want to look for the the love stories that are that complicated and um so yeah i think that is the most beautiful relationship um besides the other ones that are so beautifully portrayed by by the girls um because even with adil and and abigail it's it's just you know it's it's very beautiful, but it's it's the paradox for me, um, I guess that is 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 luring me in, or that I find the most intriguing because I probably yeah recognize it having been in them myself. Not that I've been with someone who has killed people. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but it's just you know I I usually always fall for the ones that are you know and it's it's when when it's not tangible and when it's out of my reach. So yeah, I kind of recognize that and. I feel for Rael and Scylla in a way, me, not as Alder, but as me, Lynn. <laughs> what Motherland character best represents me? Um, that was a tough question. But then again, not. Um, I think Rael. Um, I myself am someone who has always gone the opposite way of what, what was expected from me. Um, I'm one to break the rules, <laughs> um, but in 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 a good way. I just like I'm, I like to go uh, um, against the stream. I, I I you know I'm 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 not a sheep. I think I'm more the wolf, um, and also trying to find out what it is that that works for me. What what I want. What makes m my heart tick. I'm, you know, I grew up in in Belgium in the countryside and. I think, you know, m most people that I know, you know, that are very close with my friends, they've stayed here, you know, they've built their own home and, and, and family, which is an incredible, beautiful thing to do. But for me, you know, it was just, it was all too small. I, I knew that there was a world out there that was bigger and I wanted to to be part of something bigger. I always wanted to somehow make a difference. Uh, when people ask me, what well, what is it that that is 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 important to you i i always say that i hope that i can leave people better than i found them you know to make a difference there and you know breaking rules where you can to expand yourself expand your view expand the possibilities into who you can become um as a woman i feel that i didn't want to be put in an everyday situation where I had to follow this, you know, the, the system or what, what's expected from you. I always, I've always, since I was a child, had the need to, um, you know, push my limits further. I always say that the limits that you feel that you have, those are the limits that you've brought to yourself. So always be aware that you can grow every single day as a person and, 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 
and push your limits further uh, to see what's out there. And it's, it is scary sometimes, but I always feel like, you know, behind fear lies your truth. <laughs> so for me, I think that would be something that, um, yeah. Yeah, so I think Rael, because she's stubborn and she wants to, she doesn't want to follow rules and a regime and certain ways. She she most certainly doesn't agree with any, with everything that's going on. And, and I, I recognize myself in that. So if I would see myself in a character, it would be um, Rael. What song do I listen to to get into character? Usually when I prepare for... Um, a character um, or when I'm working on a show I don't necessarily listen to choose a song to a character I have this one song that I listen to after every work day uh, while I'm taking a bath because uh, I said that Alder would love to uh, lie in a bath and listen to classical music it's it's very much what I do and the song that I listen to is um, Casta Diva uh, from the opera Norma um, sung by Maria Callas. For me, she is by far the most incredible artist that has lived. Um, to me, she was a perfectionist. She wasn't just a singer, but the actor that came with her and the way how she brought emotion to the storyline, to me, is one of the most impeccable things I have experienced and listened to. I highly recommend everyone to just, you know, you don't have to be in a bath, but anywhere, just lie down, close your eyes, have it on a speaker on your phone or a really good system in your in your room. But Castadiva, to me, is a piece that has been made and performed by Maria Callas, which is simply perfection. The difficulty uh, in the technicality of having to perform that song is so high. And she does it in a way that is, is truly... I mean, I've never experienced something like that. And I'm, a, I'm an incredible music lover. I'm, I'm a singer myself. I trained um, classically myself and, and sang um, a lot of operatic pieces. Um, but to get to that level to where how Maria Callas performs is, is truly incredible. And to listen to that, it always helps me to prepare as an actor. Because for me, preparation is everything. Um, it's it's not missing a beat because, you know, you can prepare and go to set, but anything can change. Anything can happen. A, a prop can make a difference. Uh, something in your costume, the way that the actor is in front of you, you never know what's going to happen or how they're going to approach things. So you need to be able to throw everything away that you've prepared for and therefore change it again. And therefore... Pre Preparation for me is everything in my line of work. And when I listen to that song, I can only imagine how much time she has spent to prepare herself and perfect the performance um, while singing it. So that is the song that I listen to.